All right, good Monday morning. Ah, we had hell out of our pad this morning. It fell off over the weekend. I guess the temperature changed. That thing's still barely hanging on. I'm gonna have to watch it hooking up. But I've had absolute hell getting it back on this morning. It's raining. I'd have hooked up Saturday if I know this, but I was tired and ready to go home. Now, I got grease all over me, fifth wheel grease all over me. I put my gloves on still. Still didn't quite uh, keep from getting filthy because the tops of those gloves are mesh. So, but we got the pad hanging on there. Maybe we can hook back up. I might buy another one this weekend, at least buy a new ring, get it on there. But I got to clean up tools. That's all fifth wheel grease on there. So we're going to need to uh, clean them up in my patent pended uh, parts washer right here. Before we go, finish loading the truck up and get down. And like I said, I wish I'd hit that tire. I don't know if it's going to be raining like this, but I thought it would have. What a mess. All right, got our hammer cleaned up, good as new, and our screwdriver cleaned up and put up. Um, if y'all are interested in this, uh, this parts washer here, I'm selling these for $5.99. They're on special right now, $5.99.99. Uh, I will not I include shipping there, so if y'all want to do my double truck and patent pitter guard, park parking, just give me a shot. All right, so we are going to air up against our fifth wheel. Crap, we're holding on. Kingpins on the fifth wheel, please. We'll pull up a little bit. All right, one thing I absolutely get scared of doing is hooking back up to my trailer with one of these pads my next trailer will have a pad on the kingpin plate these things what will happen is they'll droop down and you get too much pressure on the trailer and you end up wadding it up so yeah next trailer i get and i may even minimizer makes a a pad that bolts on there but I'm either going to get me a fifth wheel with pads on it or put a uh, a pad on the kingpin plate on my next trailer. But like I said, I may do it on this one if I just had time, damn. So, we're going to go back here, close our hoppers because it's been raining in them all night. And uh, try and get them dry a little bit before we go uh, go load. I know one time before, they said something to me about uh, about my hoppers being wet. I'm like, well, it's been raining. Or no, no, no. That was the time I had just gotten washed out, like over there across town. And it was like, uh, hey, it's wet inside your hopper. And I'm like, uh, no shit. I just got washed out 10 minutes ago. All right, let me get back here. Roll this tarp over. We got the air going to the trailer, checking the lights and everything. That's my dump valve. So when you drop these trailers, you want to drop your air because if the air bleeds off, the suspension will actually pull the trailer backwards and put your dolly legs in a bind. And I've seen situations with hoppers where they were loaded and nobody nobody dropped the air and it ended up pulling the dolly legs off of them and put the trailer on the ground so ha ah, looks like everything's going good here bump some tires i need to do like an official check on my tires for too much longer since it's getting cold uh big 359 here just sitting here waiting patiently waiting but i think i'm fixing to fire this up and put it in the uh Put it in the shop and uh, that way it don't get rained on or anything else so let's fire this old girl up oh wow <laughs> battery's dead as a doornail there ain't nothing coming on so i don't know what's going on here uh 
I don't think I left anything on, so maybe we won't pull it up in there today. I need to since it's gonna rain. I wanna try and keep this thing as, uh, wanna keep it as dry as I can and keep it out of the sun and the elements. Oh man, I miss this old girl. I was really hoping to get it fired up today. And uh, there's what I'm looking for right there. Look in here. Oh crap. Well, I gotta get in here and look for something. Fix a low or go scale in. I don't know what kind of mess we're gonna get into doing this, but hopefully it won't be too bad today. I'm already seeing somebody screwing up big time, so oh Lord have mercy. We definitely got a uh, a taste of what winter's gonna be like. It rained up here Saturday and Sunday pretty bad like I think it got more rain 
in two days than it did in two months what the news said last night. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, we didn't get much at home. I live about an hour, a little over an hour south of here. So, here's US Express over here, like, blocking up. This is the first time, and I couldn't tell you how long I just went over here and was able to pull right up on the scale, but oh, Valiant, U.S. Express, whatever we got here. Got to, got to be in the way, but he got, he's getting out of the way, kind of. And we're going to pull up on the scale. Got to scale in. We're going to stay in our truck. We're going to listen for the buzzer, just like the sign says. But, uh, yeah, yeah, the wind's blowing outrageous today, so we're getting a taste, uh, first taste of winter. It was, uh, last week we had almost record highs, and now we're going to almost record lows, so. Like those saying, if you don't like the weather in Arkansas, just wait five minutes. Okay, so it looks like the mess is gonna be coming after coming out of the scale. We got trucks, the dry van's loaded over there where that white truck's coming out at, and you got three or four trying to go in and one trying to come out. And it looks like we're just too dumb to uh, just let the guy come out. So I don't know, I don't know how long this is gonna take. Oh, they got two of them coming out, so. Oh Lord, then you got a container coming here and this guy right here is loading brand. I think he's just about loaded, so we got all kind of we got malfunction junction right here, buddy. Oh, we got I think three of them coming out over there. So, we're probably going to get backed up on the scale. This guy's trying to make a left, so they're probably going to hang him up. We're probably just going to get hung here. I probably should have just drove around. You can go to the, go back that way, and uh, I don't know. He's got his flashers on for some reason. Yeah, there was three of them coming out over there, so what a flipping mess. Three of them coming out, three of them coming in, I guess. What a mess. All right, well, it is what it is. We're just gonna skate on across here. And... Oh, good God, this guy's trying to make a right-hand turn. And he's gonna, I'm gonna hang him up, cause Try and slip through all this mess right here. There we go. I think everybody's gonna come out unscathed. Nobody's gonna swap paint. It's a good day. Well, it's getting close to winter time. You can always tell that good old north wind's blowing, blowing this crap all over my truck. Which it's fearful, it don't matter. I need to back in here, but it's such a pain in the assets to back in here because there's nothing really to gauge it by. So I used to try and back in here and it was just a total pain. It'd take two or three tries and I just so I just started pulling in here. That's what everybody else does here. But I need to get me some t-shirts and put over my breathers. Crap, it's just getting all over the place. Jeez. Uh, yeah, I need to get some t-shirts put out there over my breathers to kind of help with uh, not sucking that crap into my air cleaners. So I need to, I don't know if they ever change the air cleaner. I need to change the air cleaners on this thing pretty soon too. Uh, man, I just keep getting a list and it's, some of the bigger stuff is gone, but you know, it's just, 
all this little bitty stuff that we're getting at. Uh, my transmission was leaking. I was trying to find it. I found it this weekend. Uh, I think it's the shift tire gasket. So I'm probably going to put a new shift tire gasket on there. Uh, just little old bitty stuff. I mean, it's just all a bunch of little stuff. So that makes me feel better that it's all little stuff. Uh, you know, as far as like what I need to do now, it's, uh, you know, we still got big cosmetic stuff like putting new front fenders on it. And, uh, you know, of course, polish, you know, that, that's going to make me feel better. And I kind of want to do some work on the paint too, as far as like buffing it. And, uh, I've got some stuff. I don't know how good it is, but I've got some, uh, some ceramic stuff that, uh, that, uh, was given to me to try and try and help this thing. So, you know, if we could buff it and then come back and once I get it slick, clay bar it, and then, uh, put the ceramic on there, hopefully it would shine and stay shining. That's the problem. I buffed this truck. Oh God, probably about a year before I sold it. And it, man, it, it looked really, really good. But, you know, as you can tell, it really did not last. So I kind of want to get it buff, get it looking better. Uh, but that's just so many things come before that so all right well we've got uh, i got to get off here i've got to uh i got to send the invoice in i need to get all my i just threw my stuff in this morning so i've got my clothes just laying back there all my food for the week is just laying back there so i'll fix to get on that while i'm loading here and uh, then we'll catch up with you in a minute well that's what it looks like when the wind blows like it did today I really kind of nervous about putting uh, wipers on, but I think I'm gonna have to put the wipers on just to give me a clear spot in the window. What a mess. I'm glad I didn't wash this thing this weekend because number one, it, it rained. I didn't even know it was supposed to rain like this. And then number two, we got this crap all over it. So yeah, yeah, good times, good times. cluster around here today. I don't. Now I can't go that way. I'm going to have to go this way again. This cat right here is right here. Right all up in the way. And could actually, I mean, you can actually park there if you like pull up and then back back in and get alongside those railroad tracks can actually do that and be out of the way but instead you know we're 15 feet away from those railroad tracks so there's absolutely nowhere to park around here so I don't know they're doing all kind of construction usually I park over here across the street uh, oh I see here Yeah, they, they got it all blocked up doing construction over there where I normally do it. Uh, I'm going to have to block this guy that has drop trailers here, I guess. So, oh, great. Where I was going to park, this guy just pulled off. Sweet.
epiphany and I like, you know, I'm gonna check my boots for those bolts. And there they are in my boots. I stuck them in my spare boots. So yeah, yeah. I just, something told me to look in them boots. So anyway, I put them in a place I wouldn't lose them. I guess if I'd wear them boots a little bit more often, I might've found them. Found, found these boats a, a lot quicker. But we got them now. We'll put them, uh, hopefully we can put them signs on in the morning. That'd be awesome. All right, we're a muddy mess. I was uh, backing in this spot, a different spot at the truck stop here a while ago. And, uh, or earlier, let me say earlier. I had to stop and get some fuel. But uh, as you can see, they uh, I was parking in this new area of parking that's across the lot there, but we've had so much rain and it's been so dry that it's made a mess. So I was actually backing in there and it got bad and I was like, Ooh, gotta get out of here. But this tire was low a while ago. So I checked on it. It ended up got a slit in between the bead and the wheel. So, man, it's leaking just a little bit right there. I hope it makes it. All right, the fam's here. They're coming to tell me bye. Let me get out of here. Whew. You talk about somebody that can get upset on me, and that's me. I can get upset on me because I hate it. I hate leaving. I was thinking about this earlier, you know, it just, uh, a friend of mine's trying to, He's trying to get me to take a job, and uh, you know it's a good paying job, really good paying job. Like you know, one of them. If this actually matures, I'd be an idiot not to take it. But at the same time, I don't know if that's what what makes me happy. You know, the roads what makes me happy. I don't. I'm not one of these guys that likes staying out there for three or four weeks at a time. I, I'm a. I'm a four or five day kind of guy you know i mean it's i'm trying to think the last time i've been gone longer than five days i think i was out six days here a while back but that was a rare occasion i, I mean it's probably been over 10 years since i've been gone longer longer than five days you know and that's just that's just me i'm a i'm a weekend home guy you know and i probably make more money if i did something else where you know i stayed out and and, uh, you know, I actually kind of enjoyed my, my job that I did stay gone a little bit longer. I was actually gone like, you know, nine or 10 days on a two week cycle. You know, I'd go on nine or 10 days, come home and stay four or five days and then go on another nine or 10 days. So yeah. And it's, uh, my wife hated that. Uh, I liked it because I could get more work done because I could have one weekend a month at home, you know, and a lot of times I didn't do or I say one weekend, two weekends home a month. And I didn't really do a whole lot on the weekends. Like I, I, I left on Wednesday and I got home usually the next Thursday, uh, sometimes the following Friday, some somewhere along in there. But you know, I, if I got home on Thursday, I mean, I was, I was working on my truck Friday and I wouldn't touch it again until Monday, unless there was something really uh, pressing I had to do. and. This truck was, you know, I actually got a lot more stuff done on the truck because, you know, Monday and Tuesday, uh, everybody was going to school and work, and I was working on my truck, man, getting things done. You know, this thing, all the, back then, you know, it didn't have one oil leak on it. All the exhaust was chrome. I mean, like, it stayed clean all the time, stayed polished all the time. Everything was pretty, pretty well maintained on it all the time, and, and you know, it just, when you run like I do now, you know, it's, it's uh, everything's a mad rush. I mean, you leave, uh, you want to spend as much time at home as you can. So you leave late, like I'm leaving now, uh, and you come home. And when you get home, you are working on your truck as much as you can and, and trying to balance that, spend family time, work in your yard, maybe do something else. I mean, like I, I don't do nothing else other than I'm a husband a dad and a trucker that's all i do that is i mean i don't hunt i don't fish i don't do jack other than truck and have kids <laughs> so, all right i gotta get going here we're fixing to catch a log book up and uh and see about getting on down here to louisiana
somebody else unloads my trailer for me and I can just sit here and pull up and not have to get out in that rice bran, especially like I don't know why I'm sleepy this morning. Well, number one, I hadn't had any caffeine, but number two, I'm just, I don't know. I was kind of sleepy, but I was going to get out and check with him. I need to look at that tire again. I'm not really sure exactly what's going on, but about, just about know what's going on. So, uh, I'm probably going to have to stop and get a tire today. Uh, I'm not really excited about it because, like, you know, you put tires on, here we are in October, I've got probably, you know, 80,000, put these tires on back in like February, or March, something like that, and I've probably got 80,000 miles on them, and yeah, here we are, having to do, doing some replacing and everything else, uh, man, it's just been a mess with this set, it's just always a mess with a set of tires and me, very rarely do I ever get all eight to wear out at the same time. I'm just I'm to the point now where I feel like I need to get them by half tread and buy another set and just sell the ones I pull off. And uh, that may be what happens with this deal. I, it'll be after the first of the year if I do that though, because next month I gotta buy tags. I'm probably gonna put tags on both trucks. Then my insurance down payment is coming up at uh, four, fourth of January so you know within a little over a month I'm going to have to shell out $3,000 for some tags and then turn around and do a down payment on insurance I'm sure that's going to be 20 something hundred dollars so you know it's just going to be like 50 something hundred dollars out of my bank account just at one time not at one time but you know you got to consider like Thanksgiving's coming up, so we'll miss a week for that, and I got to do some stuff in Nashville the week before, so probably gonna miss two weeks there, and then I'll miss two weeks in New, or you know, I'll probably miss two or three weeks around the first and Christmas. So I'm always at home with my kids usually uh, at Christmas, the whole Christmas break I take when they're you know they're out for two weeks, and I'm at home for two weeks because that's just important to me and. Uh, I don't know, I may try and do some local work or something like that, but yeah, basically we're gonna have some good hits here in the next next month and a half, or about well, two months, yeah. About two months here, we're gonna, you know, trying to recoup our losses from uh, redoing the front end on this thing, because it was 50 something hundred dollars, so anyway. My wife is probably fixing to have to quit her job because she is in nurse practitioner school. She is a director right now, and is going back, uh, She's got one master's in healthcare administration, but she's going back and getting her uh, APN nurse practitioner deal now. Uh, so, you know, looks like uh, well, it looks like good things are going to be uh, kind of difficult at Christmas this year, around Christmas, and probably for the next six eight months. So. Uh, until she graduates and gets a job, you know, she still got, after she graduates, she'll have to go do licensing and, and all the crap you got to do to prescribe medicine and all that. So, you know, we might be closer to, you know, 10 months before she actually has a job and is working at full capacity at her, uh, with her new degree. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought things were going to work out different and recently we figured out that they're probably not so uh, looks like uh, looks like I'm gonna have to looks like I'm gonna have to be trucking hard for the next seven eight nine ten months all right so we're gonna look at this tire real quick oh, I got rain dripping off my trailer oh yeah look at oh my god that thing is coming apart right there. And it's leaking a little bit of air, but whew, we're just gonna get us a new one put on here. I hate to put a new one right beside that one that's half wore out, but it is what it is. We, uh, we gotta do what we gotta do. I don't wanna put a used tire right there, so. I'll probably put a new one right there. And uh, this other one that blew out um, a few weeks ago, 
when I get back home, I may swing by the Goodyear place and let them put me to uh, this new one I'm gonna buy today and take this used one I got off and put a, two new ones side by side and then the two that were beside the ones that blew out, put them together. So uh, I hope that's clear as mud how that's gonna happen there. But anyway, uh, well, it's just trucking. That's all it is, just trucking. All right, we're getting in here, finally getting in here to get this tire fixed. Hour and a half later, I ain't seen the big jack. Oh Lord, I went ahead and told him to let the air out of that tire before he started messing with it. That thing was making me nervous. But we down here, it is, for South Louisiana, it's kind of cold. Like it's, the wind's blowing, it's like 40 something degrees down here. We right here off the coast where it's hot all the time. So anyway, we're getting this tire fixed. Uh, had a little bit of weight and you know, we're gonna get it fixed, get a load. And I don't know, I'm thinking about going home before I leave out again. I'm just in one of those moods. tires ain't getting no cheaper i got i when i bought this set i got a pretty good deal on them i don't know what the deal was but i got a pretty good deal on them so uh i won't say i got them like 250 dollars cheaper than that but anyway i can't remember what it was but it don't matter i needed it had to have it today so uh sometimes it just don't matter you got to pay the price he told me like man I can sell it to you tomorrow. First of the month, our promotions come on. I'm like, I'm worried about my load. I, hey, he's talking about saving me fifty dollars or no, one hundred twenty dollars. I'm like, hey, you know, I said, I'll just uh, you can call me tomorrow and I can give you my credit card over the phone. We can take care of this tomorrow. But I said I got to go today, so that's what I got to do. I got to go. So uh, let's go load. All right, so we got. Uh we got loaded and uh, scaled out just a second ago. We are just a little bit heavy on the drives, as you can see. That first one is, uh, first number is my steer. The second number is my truck together, so you minus that. That puts me at about 34, 160, so I'm about 160 over on my drives. But my gross weight would be that 78, 640 or whatever it is and uh, then my trailer will be uh, 33,620 so all in all I didn't do too awful bad on this deal but uh, I wish I'd got just a little bit more on my trailer and just a tad bit less on my truck but regardless uh, you know I mean with the way axle weights are and the way this truck's set up I've never been able to uh, never really been able to put a full 50,000 on there legally so you know I mean it's uh well I've been able to put 50,000 on there legally but I can't get 80 I can't max my way out 80,000 with the way that uh with the way my axle weights work so just one of those things we uh we got right at 50,000 uh just about 400 pounds short of being 50,000 so I'd love to be 50,000 uh, put another 400 pounds in the back and I wouldn't have been over but that's just uh, that's just this bolt game and how it works with pulling bolts so you win some you lose some and then some you uh, you consider a win because it's so close to a win so this is one of those I am fixing to uh, I'm fixing a ride to the house I think uh I think I'm gonna go spend the night in the house tonight. It's getting late and uh, not really late, late, but it's right at three o'clock. The way this is gonna work is I'm gonna get to Baton Rouge about 4.30. And I don't know if you guys have ever been through Baton Rouge. I've got several guys that I know that comment from the Baton Rouge area. And uh, 
I know they know what it's like uh, going eastbound on 10 this time of day uh, from Port Allen back over the bridge and on out uh, on out towards Denham Springs Walker and going out that way on 12 man it's a it's a friggin nightmare all the way to Hammond basically and uh, I'm just not wanting to deal with it today so uh, I figure I'm gonna lose an hour I'm going to lose an hour going through Baton Rouge this time of day, and it's an hour out of the way to go home, so I'm just going to go home. It's trick-or-treat night, and uh, I'm going to try and make it for the tail end of some trick-or-treat. So, all right, y'all stay tuned, and uh, we'll catch you in a little bit. Once again, we're on the side of the road with this raggly son of a bitch. Run out of fuel on one side, of course. Freaking three miles from the damn truck stop. So, I don't know. I mean, this is this is getting insane. I, I'm ready to take some time off, fix this pile of shit, or sell it. One of the two. I mean, it's just... Hell, I try to, I, I try to work on it on the weekend. It just, I don't... I don't, I don't know how you can run something that's a big a pile of shit as this right here. I just don't understand it. I mean, it just, oil leaks every freaking where, everywhere, freaking blow by everywhere. I just, I, shit, I don't know. I'm trying to, about the time, every time I get somewhere where I can get the damn fuel filter off, the damn car comes by. So let me get this off real quick and try and get these filled up so I can, start this bitch and get i'm trying hell i'm trying to get home i just want to go home and have a nice supper and go to bed well we got our starting fluid and we're gonna spray it in the breather in here and uh i don't know if i can hit the button let's see here Haul ass, haul ass, okay. I can't film and do this at the same time. I'm gonna spray some starting fluid in this breather right here. And hopefully. Hopefully get this thing started pretty quick. Come on, baby. Belt squalling like hell because I got the wrong belts on there. Oh, Lord. It's a process, but I am losing patience. I was pretty good to this happen. I mean, I did get this thing started in like 10 minutes, but still, you know, I'm also 10 minutes from home. So, uh, anyway. We got it. Yeah. Okay, it's good and picked up. Turn that jake break off. All right, it's good and picked up now. We're going to shut the hood and go fill it with fuel. I got some, I got some things I got to tell y'all. <laughs> That's probably going to blow your mind. It's kind of starting to blow my mind, too. All right. You may... We made it to the fuel stop anyway. You may wonder why, like, hey, why don't you check your fuel, you dumbass? And uh, that's a pretty simple question. Uh, pretty simple answer, too. The, uh, the fuel gauge quit working. So, I don't, you know... I keep, uh, you know, fuel gauge ain't working, you know, not the end of the world. You can keep up with your miles and 
know about like what your miles per gallon are. You know, and I've been trying to check this, but you know, I've been running just a little bit out of that pasture tank from here or there off. Uh, so I'm not really sure what the mileage been. I know it ain't been like super great. I've been thinking it's just a little over five, but the reason I run out of fuel is because I just hit the I just hit like this tank is 163 gallons. 150 usable. You know, when you're uh, when you're dealing with tanks and fuel, you only fill up to 10% or 90% capacity. So uh, the other 10% has to be for expansion and uh, you don't want to fill your tank up all the way to the top and then get out on a hot summer day and uh, watch it go to the weakest, go out the weakest, weakest hole. But anyway, what has happened is uh, we're getting about four miles a gallon with this thing. So. I, I can't, uh, I don't know, I, 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 I've got to keep working because I'm going to be off a pretty good bit in the next couple months, got a lot of big things going on, and i got to keep working, so uh, I don't know I don't know what to do. We may have to get back into 359 here in a couple of weeks and, uh, and just uh, put this project on hold. I can't, uh, I can't keep running out of fuel out on the side of the road. I just put a new sending unit in this tank when I, I don't know, probably, but right before I got rid of it, so, I mean, a sending unit ain't but six years old, I mean, not saying a lot about Peterbilt sending units, because they suck, but, uh, I figured it'd last longer than that, but anyway, we are, uh, well, I'm just gonna fill up, get ready to go in the morning, and, uh, try and go home, and then, I'm just gonna have just enough time to take a shower and go to bed, so, uh, made a lot of sense coming home tonight, didn't it? So anyway, let me get some fuel so my wife can come get me.